私はレズなのだよしきっよしよしカッチョパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパーパー To further explain just why the Monogatari series works so well, let's go all the way back to 2009 and talk about the season that started it all Bake Monogatari. To put it as vaguely and simply as possible, Bake Monogatari tells the story of a soon to be third year Koyomi Araragi and the supernatural oddities he encounters. Now, I'm gonna be upfront about this. I fucking adore Bake Monogatari, for many reasons of which we will address throughout this video. But first, let's talk about everyone's favorite part of the show the girls. And no, I'm not gonna rank the Bake girls. Senjo, best girl, fight me, you proles. I wanna talk about the phenomenal character writing in Bake. Throughout 15 episodes, five heroines are introduced, and none are quite normal to say the least. You have Senjo Gahara, the purple haired tsundere turned yandere, Hachikuji, the sometimes brutally honest schoolgirl, Kanbaru, the athletic sapphist, Sengoku, the troubled middle schooler, and last but not least, Hanakawa, the model class president with baggage to spare. The problems for each of these characters when introduced are all supernatural, like Senjo's weight crab or Kanbaru's rainy devil, for example, but the The core struggle is always a very human one, one that makes these characters seem so much more relatable or realistic. Yes, Senjo loses her weight because of the weight crab, but that weight was actually the emotional weight of Senjo's feelings of guilt after watching her mother fall prey to a cult. This grief is what Senjo is trying to escape, and many a viewer might be able to relate to this as well. Eventually, though, Senjo Gahara decides that escaping at the cost of her precious feelings for her mother isn't worth it, and takes back her pain and weight. The desire to endure for the sake of or due to fond memories can resonate with just about anybody, and this relatability helps her and her struggles feel all the more real, even if her personality may be larger than life. Another character worth looking at would definitely be Sengoku. Sengoku is your textbook shy kid who struggles to converse with seemingly anyone of authority, but this trait is shown rather than told, meaning that we can tell she's super shy because of the things she does, rather than us being told that she's just very shy. She keeps her bangs long and wears A hat to avoid eye contact. She speaks softly to avoid drawing any extra attention. She enters a panic state very quickly when put on the spot. Rather than just telling us these things, Bake Monogatari shows rather than tells, which helps to create a more believable world and, in this case, a more believable character. The girls aren't the only driving force in Bake, though. In fact, we've yet to talk about our best boy, Koyomi Araragi. Araragi is the mostly human but kinda not protagonist of the series, and he's not unlike the Bake girls in terms of character writing. More specifically, Araragi. Araragi has a lot of character development even just within Bake. Araragi often learns a lesson at the end of each arc as well. Like at the end of the aforementioned Suruga Monkey arc, Araragi is shown that he doesn't have to do everything by himself and that asking for help is sometimes the best course of action. In fact, he even applies this exact lesson about halfway through the Tsubasa Cat arc when he calls Sengoku and Kanbaru to help him look for Shinobu and even accepts help from Neko Hanakawa. And even before that, Araragi learns a much harsher lesson during the Nanako Snake arc. Araragi has to come to terms with the Fact that he can't save everybody as one of the cursed snakes that has been constricting Sengoku flees and returns to its sender, who will become cursed in Sengoku's stead. This is like Araragi's wake up call saying, hey, this is all real with real consequences, don't fuck up. Seeing Araragi deal with failure, then seeing him act as if he truly learned from his experiences makes him so much more of a believable character and that much more enjoyable to watch, which is great seeing as how we spend a majority of the screen time with him. And each character grows like this too. Watching s e n j o Gahara go from the cold loner to the verbally abusive yet still very affectionate girlfriend is a treat. Whenever another girl is introduced, instead of thinking, oh great, another piece of the harem, you start to think, wow, I wonder how this character dynamic will shake shit up. It's that sentiment that makes you realize, oh wow, these girls. Are more than just talking plot devices built for the MC to interact with. They're built like real people. And sure, the fan service can be a bit overboard sometimes. I'm looking at you, Nisei Monogatari. But I think that these moments are easily made up for by how enjoyable the rest of the show is. Of course, the Monogatari series won't be everyone's cup of tea, but I will always recommend Bake Monogatari to everyone because the stories told and the characters introduced in those fantastic 15 episodes are written so masterfully that I'd like to think anyone could enjoy them, regardless of their predisposition. So if you've made it this far and you haven't already, 
go watch Bakke Monogatari. <laughs>